Greetings, everyone, and welcome. I'm the Chancellor Soul Mike Boone, and you've tuned in to a special two-part edition of Soul Facts, a show highlighting the history of legendary artists and their music. Talented, charismatic, intelligent, cunning, witty, outgoing, restless, emotional, passionate, caring, loving, husband, father, pioneer. Describing the characteristics of one of the greatest vocalists of all time, the incomparable Little Willie John. Before Motown Records made his worldwide groundbreaking impact on the music scene by his founder Barry Gordy Jr., Little Willie John was an inspiration for generations of artists and musicians, cross-fertilizing genres of gospel, jazz, R&B, doo-wop, and pop, creating a now ingredient for a future indelectable recipe called soul. William Edward John was born on November 15, 1937, in Cullingdale, Arkansas. His parents, Murtis and Lily John, and their seven children migrated from the segregated South to Detroit in 1941 when Willie was just four years of age. Willie John's love of music surfaced at the age of six when his family formed a gospel group called the United Five in 1943. To later showcase his talent, he participated in various amateur shows and nightclubs. It one day brought the attention to a popular band leader songwriter named Johnny Otis, who later gained fame for his hit record, Willie and the Hand Jive, who saw Willie perform at the Paradise Theater in Detroit. Absolutely floored by what talent he saw in John, Otis tried to secure a record deal for the young prodigy was turned down because of his age. This appointment would not deter Willie John's spirit as he continued to participate and win various talent shows in the Motor City. So much so by now, he was now being managed by a gentleman named Harry Bulk, who believed in Willie's talent and arranged for his first recording session at the United Sound Studios in Detroit for two holiday songs on a local label called Prize. Mommy, What Happened to Our Christmas Tree, and his flip side, Jingle Bells, billed as Willie John, Three Lads, and a Lass. Recorded in November 1953, it sold over 5,000 copies. Now christened as Little Willie John, and still steaming from his holiday song, Willie was being booked on a tour that traveled from various cities gaining momentum on his showbiz prowess. In 1954, band leader Paul Williams asked Willie's parents permission to go on the road with him. Williams gained fame for his monster recording of 1949 called The Hucklebuck that created a dance sensation and charting number one R&B for an astonishing 14 weeks. While on tour, Willie was being the restless, precocious individual would take part in some of the gambling parties, which angered Paul Williams and led him to terminate Willie from his band. All was not lost because in 1955, a historical meeting with Hal Neely led to a contract with King Records, founded by Sid Nathan, would forever change Willie John's life. Neely placed John in the hands of a top songwriter, producer, and AR man, Henry Glover. Glover was known for such hits as Drowning in My Own Tears, recorded by Ray Charles, and California Sun, revived by the Riveras in 1963. Booked at the Belltone Studios in New York, Willie debuted Titus Turner's All Around the World. All around the world, I'd rather be a fly. I lie it on my baby and stay with her till I die. With a toothpick in my hand, I dig a ten foot ditch and run through the jungle fighting lines with a switch. Of course, you know I love you, baby. <laughs> 
All Around the World was debuted a month after Turner's version was released. The song charted number 5 R&B in the fall of 1955, making it his first top 10 hit. During his tenure at King Records, Willie racked up 17 charted hits, including 5 top 10 from 1955 to 1959. Starting with his double A sided hit of 1956. When the night begins, and I'm dead, need your love so bad. I need your love so bad. My little girl. His B sided classic, Home at Last. Girl. My little girl. So baby, can you see? Do something for me. You must do something for me. Talk to me. Oh yes, talk to me, talk, talk to, to me. me. You're a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. If there ever was one, I just can't help it, pretty baby. Tell it like it is. All my fallen tears, tell it like it is. You better leave my kitten alone. Leave my kitten alone. Let them talk. If they want to. Talk don't bother me. I want the whole wide world to know that I love you so. One of the most famous recordings of Little Willie John's career was a tune presented to him by Henry Glover called Fever. Composed by John Davenport, better known to the music world as Otis Blackwell, Eddie Cooley, an alleged future R&B singer named Joe Tex, who claimed he first wrote the song as a poem and sold it to Cooley to pay for his hotel bill at the Hotel Teresa in Harlem, New York, where he was staying and performing at the Apollo Theater. Tex told Cooley to put into the arrangements of Tennessee Ernie Ford's number one hit at the time, 16 Tons. Recognized for its texture of cool jazz, blues, and R&B, Fever is considered to be one of the greatest recordings in music history. Little Willie John didn't like the song because of the finger snapping. He was persistent to record it with the urging of Henry Glover. Although Peggy Lee recorded the first cover version and would oust more record sales and become familiar to pop audiences around the world, who sprung dozens of cover versions by various artists. The greatest essential version belongs to the one 
and only Little Willie John. Little Willie John's career in life was soon soared to new heights, new beginnings, and future complications as the dawn of a new decade would soon appear. Soul Facts, a show created, written, produced, and copywritten by Mike Boone, the Chancellor of Soul.